Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord in highest. I want to thank God for His grace upon our life. Today I want to discuss about the book of Romans, the epistle of Romans, or the letter that Apostle Paul wrote to the people in Romans, that is, the believer in the Lord Jesus Christ in Romans. So, as we begin, I pray the Lord will speak His mind to us. I will continue to learn to know more about him in Jesus' name. Here I'm reading from chapter 1 from verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Here God is speaking to us according to the appointment of Apostle Paul. Just a second. So, Apostle Paul is called by God. In other words, in this particular verse, we'll be able to identify or know how God uh, called his disciple or the apostle. It's not what you desire that you wanted to do. Rather, it is what God designed from eternity past, how he wants to use you. To Jeremiah, he said, right from the mother's womb, he has anointed him, he has selected him. The same thing is applicable to every minister of God that God wanted to use. He has it in plan even before the parent of that particular man of God met as a couple. Verse 2 says, which he had promised afford by his prophet in the Holy Scripture. So God knows the time. God has designed this particular fellow to be used by him. So nothing can stop it and nothing can change it. Verse 3, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Here we are told about the coming of the Messiah, that is the first coming of Messiah. We have two sets of coming of Messiah. We have the first coming of Messiah and we have the second coming of Messiah. The first coming of Messiah is the one that has been historically written down for our own to understand the reason why Jesus came. That is the first coming of Messiah. He came to die for our sin and to deliver us from the sin penalty. And that is not only, he also came to tell us and teach us the ideal life of every child of God. Irrespective of dispensation, you may find yourself. So, we are able to see that through the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ has to do with the, the millennium. When is it going to come to rule the world? That is for 1,000 years. It's coming with his angels. It's coming with his saints. Then also there's intermediary between the first coming and the second coming, which we also refer as rapture, which is the end of the church age, where the Holy Spirit of God will be removed from the planet Earth. So this is... Um, what we need to understand concerning the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was prophesied, also the second coming, which was also prophesied, an intermediate coming, which we call rapture, where Jesus Christ will take his children uh, meeting in the sky, and from the sky to the, the kingdom, the heaven, where he designated for himself and where we are going to meet. Then verse 4 says, And declare to be son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. From verse 3, we are treating the book of Romans chapter 1. So verse 3 said that, that concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
which was made in the seed of David, which also referred that he became man, according to the book of John, chapter 1, downward, which says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Talking about the physical body of our King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that is Jesus Christ. That is when he took the image of man, when he took the flesh of man, when God became man. And that is what is being referred to verse 3, that God became flesh. And many may be asking the reason why God became flesh. Why could God, uh, why is God becoming flesh? What is it going to what is the purpose why he really uh, did this? I want you to know that it's because of his love towards us. Just as you know in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So the love of God extended beyond the scope of time and he came to demonstrate his love. You know, love is not just by mere confession with mouth or verbally conversation, just as is so common in our days today. Anybody can just say, I love you without knowing you, which, is, which doesn't make any sense. So here we're able to see that God demonstrated that love and that reason why he became flesh is called Jesus Christ, the Son of God from the seed of David. So that is very, very important that we need to understand. So according to the flesh, that is the seed of David, according to the flesh, that is the humanity that is given to God the Son that make God the Son unique from the entire Godhead, that is God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. So now in verse 4, talking about that, and declare to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, that he declared to be what? Son of God. In other words, he declared to be God himself. He called himself Son of God, which means God the Son, by the first one as a seed that is God the Son in humanity, then as a deity, God the Son, according to the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know that God the Son is the same thing as Almighty God. According to the book of Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 6 downward, is called uh, Everlasting Father, is called Eternal Father, is called Prince of Peace. So that is his name. He's called Wonderful Counselor. They are going to say he's called a mighty God. That is a name that is given to that baby born from a virgin. So here we're able to see the plan of God for humanity. The reason why God became man is for us to be saved so that he realized that no one is qualified to deliver man or save man from sin and penalty of sin. So without him becoming that perfect sacrifice, we will not be qualified to be called today the son of God or children of God, daughter of God, through applying our faith in him that because of what he has done, we believe the totality of what Jesus has done on the cross of Calvary so that we can have life abundantly. And I want you to know God became man just for us to be saved. There was not any time that man became God. So God became man for you and I to be saved. So this is going to be a lot of series we'll be teaching from one part to another so that we continue to understand the mind of God that God has designed for us. I pray the Lord continue to open our eyes and understanding. The book of Romans is one of my favorite books. It talks about even starting from the beginning, citing the information down to this, our current dispensation and further it more to what will happen in future. So I pray the Lord continue to open our eyes to see this wonderful mystery in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching this broadcast. God bless you.